in the family the church is present the friends who are here with us even though we are in this sorrow and somber mood I wish to greet you God is good and all the time uh, before you is Banfis Mogire from Wyndham part of the community here in Wyndham so I would wish to welcome everybody I would wish to welcome everybody to this function um, it's going to last up to about seven o'clock so I wish that you be patient with us so that we can have a good program for our brother Henry so before we do anything um, I would wish to call the pastor so we can begin the program with God so he can lead us through this whole program welcome pastor Ezra Together, as well, I'd like to invite you all to rise as we have a word of prayer so that the Spirit of the Lord can fill us, can guide us, can lead us, can comfort us in our time together. So let us bow down, believe, and pray. Dear Father, we have gathered in this room filled with sadness and sorrow, pained and hurting. But at the same time, we are reminded of the scripture that gives us hope and comfort. And our desire is that as we, we shall fellowship here together, that we may experience you. That despite the realities of life that we're facing now, your grace will be sufficient upon us. We pray for the Giza family. We ask that, Lord, you may visit with them and comfort them. Send the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and every single person who has come and will come, that their presence may bring warmth and comfort to this family. As we begin our service and our program, may your presence abide with us. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. To get us started, we are just going to have a session of songs. Uh, there is a way music uplift, and I will encourage you all to sing along with the family. And then uh, Pastor Simon will give us a short devotional. And then we'll hand over the mic back to Boniface and Kwan Company, who will lead, lead and guide us in the speeches session. So I'm going to invite the choristers if they can come up here and uh, they will lead us in songs that we're going to sing. So choristers, if you can make your way forward, I'll be helpful. Uh, our first hymn will be 485, on the Master of Jesus. Oh, 
Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing us all together to be with the Giza family. The song says that you care in times like this. At times we may wonder if you really are there or if you really do care. But as we open your scripture, we pray that you'll give us comfort to help us through this grief. We ask that you be with us as we start until the end. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to greet you all. Uh, my name is... Uh, Pastor Simeon Momanya, the pastor of the Kenyan Community Church in Brooklyn Center. Uh, when Steve is in school, that's where he comes to church. And so we came here to be with, uh, with you this afternoon. Um, death is an enemy. We were never created to experience a death. We were, never ex we were never created to be okay with death. Death came as, a, as an enemy. So we will never be okay with death. When death comes, it hurts. 
and it's very painful. And it's until Jesus comes when death is going to be defeated for the last time. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, death is going to be the last enemy who is going to be defeated. So accidents are going to be defeated. Sickness is going to be defeated. COVID is going to be defeated. All these things will be defeated. And the last enemy, the Bible says, that is going to be defeated is going to be death. And the Bible says, we'll look back and say, death, where is your strength? Death, where is your sting when Jesus comes? Let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51. Paul, writing to the people of Corinth, writing to us, he says this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a tinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the death will be raised incorruptible. And the death will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this moral must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this moral has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O heads, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law he continues to say so Paul here makes a case and he says there will be two groups of people at the coming of Jesus who will be changed the first group will be the death the righteous death those who die believing in Jesus the Bible says they will be raised without any sin, without any corruption, without any uh, pain, they will rise. Those who died out of accident like Henry, they will rise up in health. Those who have died with sickness, they will rise up not sick anymore. But the Bible says the other group will be the righteous who will be living when Jesus comes. And the Bible says we shall all be changed. Changed in a way, it means that we will put on incorruption. This body of ours that dies, this body of ours that gets sick, this body of ours that sins, this body of ours that fails us sometimes will be changed. Then the Bible says death will have no strength over us anymore. Brothers and sisters, this afternoon, Henry has slept, as the Bible says, Henry has slept. But in the last trumpet, when Jesus comes, he will be among the first people to hear the voice of Jesus. The last text I'm going to read is First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm going to read verse 13 through 16. The Bible says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who, have, those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
than we who are alive and remain until uh, the coming of the Lord we shall be caught up together with them in the crowds to meet with the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Paul says, a time is coming when those who have fallen asleep in the Lord will be the first one to hear the trumpet of God. This will be the alarm clock that will wake them up. God is coming and he's going to wake them up. Those who have put their hope in Christ, when he comes, they will be among the first ones to hear the voice of Jesus. And they will wake up. And as Paul said, they are waking up not in the state when they went to sleep with, but they will be waking up, changed, together with Elijah's raving, they will be we will be changed in a tingling of an eye. These bodies of ours will be changed. And then the Bible says that we shall meet with the Lord and we shall be with him forever. When Jesus comes in his presence, that's when we will never experience death. That's when we will never experience pain. That's, when, that's where we will never experience suffering. That's the only place where we will never experience the challenges of life that we are experiencing right now. So until then, my prayer for you is that to be faithful. My prayer for you is to surrender our lives to him because we never know how death will come knocking at our doors. It may come in any way. It may come in an accident, it may come in a sickness, it may come in whichever way. You never know. We just have to be ready. So that when it, that time comes, we will be looking forward to see Jesus the moment he comes again. My, this family, we are praying for you. That God will give you strength. Uh, this is painful, this is difficult, but we pray that God will be with you. God will walk with you in this journey. Um, this family, this community that has come together, they've come simply to be with you. I pray that God uh, in his mercy will be with you as you walk through this journey. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the blessed hope we have as your children that death is not the last answer. There is hope beyond the grave. And we want to thank you that we know you promised that you're coming back again. So we look forward to your coming. And as we wait for you, please help us to be faithful. We want to pray for the Ngiza family, that you will be with them at this time, that you will you will give them strength, that you will walk with them in this journey and help us as a community to support them as they grieve, as they go through this. God, we will be a source of strength to them. May you be with them, Lord. May you guide them, may you lead them. Because we've asked this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Pastor Simeon, for the wonderful presentation. Um, we appreciate for everything. At this time, we are going to have another session. Um, we are going to have a few people come, um, also give some short speeches. From there, we'll, at the end, we'll also have Pastor John, um, he will do the presentation too at the last end. So at this time, allow me to call the following people to come and give their remarks. Um, may I have Robert from the Twin Cities community to come and say a word? Please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, here in Wyndham community. Um, my name is Robert Koina. Uh, we come from, I come from the same community where Enelingisa comes from. Enli 
of course we live in the twin cities, but back at home in Kenya we come from the same Kiango area. Early we grew up together, you know, as they were, we were like one class ahead of him. So it's kind of we grow like seeing each other and doing things together with, uh, uh, in the community. And uh, for the family, Ngisa's family, we are very sorry. But uh, as we know, dad is there. We are also, at some point, we will not be here. When God is going to call us, we are going to go. We know we have like two paths, like one path, and then we are dead, we, we die. And God knows all this. And uh, we would pray for you. And uh, Steve, I know now it's going to be difficult for you. Now you're going to be the father, you're going to be the son, and you're going to be everything. But we're going to pray for you as you are going to take over for the family. As a family from back home, we would like you to reach us if there is anything will be there for you to assist where it's necessary. And uh, I know Tim is there and everybody is there right like now from back at home where the people who would be, if you need help, would be there. And the Wyndham community, the Wyndham church people, we thank you. Thank you so much for all what you have done. We as a family from the Twin Cities, we could not be here to do the much you had done or you have done. We thank you for that. And uh, as we go forward, there is nothing much I can say which can change things. Things are the way they are, but it's to pray for each other as the time God puts us in this world. And let us not be scared. Let us be normal. Let us do things normal. We know we have exits in our pockets, but we don't know when that exit will be in this world. But that's what I much I can, uh, can say. Uh, let us preach for each other, and let us be together when there is a, a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Robert, for your few words and kind words. Um, let me have Daniel from the Twin Cities. Let me also have Victor coming alongside and Joel on oh, Joel. Sorry. Um, good afternoon. Um, like you said, my name is Daniel Barongo Nyangori. And um, for me, I just want to say pole to the family and friends at large. Uh, this is a very difficult moment. But again, it's a reality of this life. Um, we are all passing by. We are just... We're, this, is, this world is not our home. Uh, as much as uh, we don't want to face the reality, it's the nature of this life. Sin brought death, and at some point we'll go, all go through it. Um, nevertheless, um, I just want to send my condolences in, on behalf of Twin Cities. I know many will want to be here, but they couldn't for some reason. Um, I've known the family through Steve not too long ago, and uh, uh, Steve is a, is, a, is a fine gentleman. He's always helpful at church. Actually, I thought the family was in Twin Cities. It's just recently I, I realized uh, they live here in Wyndham. Um, but um, I just pray that God may comfort you because it's only God that can comfort you. There's no words that I can say to make the situation any better. But we pray that with time that uh, you'll find peace at this very difficult moment. Uh, again, also thank the friends and family and uh, the community for coming together to support this family. 
Good evening. See, even in the afternoon, yeah. All right. Um, my name is Victor Carraro. I'm from the Twin Cities, representing the KCC Church, the Young Adults. We are Steve, is a member. But at the same time, I'm here representing the, it's kind of an, uh, I'll say a, father, a fatherly role that I played because whenever Steve is in the Twin Cities, he stays with me. So my house is Steve's house when he was in the, he is in the Twin Cities. So I may not have much to say, but I would I'd like to tell you, Brother Steve, like I've always tell you, told you before, we all have our times. And this time, well, it was too bad that it was your dad's time. But it's to your time to pick up the mantle, where, uh, the mantle from where your dad has left, it, has left it. I know it's gonna be a tough journey. You've never been there. I've, I was there approximately 10 years ago. I was in your position. I picked up everything and I represented everything. But the only advice I can give you right now is that your mother, your sister, and your young brother, they all need that support as much as you need it. But they're gonna be looking onto you because you are the one who's the next in line. Be there for them and stand with them all along. You're gonna be the main stem for everything. And the family, we may have known, I may have not known you for a long time, or like for a while, I've only known Steve, but from what he is, he presents everything that the family is. And to everybody, it's a tough time. We are here because of Henry. Of course, because of who he was to us. I did not know him, but as far as I've heard about him, he was a man to look out for. May we continue with the good work he was doing and take it there from where he left it. Unless put our trust and everything in God, for he can lead us everywhere. He can lead the way. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Victor, for your condolences. Um, Hello, um, as you've heard, my name is Jail, and Steve happens to be a friend, a brother, and a family member, as Victor also said. We're sorry. I know when I first heard of the news, I have never met Steve's dad, although we had planned to come down. I think about two weeks before that, we had just spoken about coming down and seeing where Steve comes from and the family. So when one of our friends told us that you know, Steve's dad passed, we're like, Steve, which Steve? You need to be more specific. There's many people with those names. But it felt as if we had lost one of us, even though we did not know him. And that just goes to show how much of a family member Steve is to us. And in extension, the mom and the siblings, we're all family and we're here for you. I might not have too much to say. And right now, I'm pretty sure everybody will read your verse. We'll tell you this, we'll tell you we'll be there, but you're still mourning and you're still there. Maybe you will not hear it, but you know, hearing and processing it will be too much. But we're here for you, and I will encourage everyone who's here, do not be here for just today and tomorrow. As we all start walking away and the house becomes colder, that's when the reality hits that there's someone missing. So I will encourage that a phone call, a text message, whether it's returned or not, goes a long way in showing the support. We're praying for you and we will continue supporting Okay, for me, my name is Regina, as you heard, and I'm just gonna read 
a message that was sent from Colonial Man and Nursing Home. I'm also an employee there, but Henry worked there too at some time. So our hearts go out to all of Henry's family and friends that are enduring through this incredible loss. Some of us were fortunate enough to meet and know Henry throughout the past years, and we know how important he was to everyone. We remember him as a friendly, hardworking, and dedicated man who was pleasant and easy to work with. We send our love to his wife, children, and everyone else in the family. As we pray for healing and comfort during this time, we know that grief comes in waves and we intend to offer support to those who need it throughout this journey. Our deepest sympathies, your colonial manor family. Thank you. Thank you for the message and if you can let them know that we received the message and we thank them for every support that they're giving this family um, since this happened. Um, allow me now to come home. I'm going to ask a few people to talk um, from Wyndham. I mean, I have the following. Let me start with Daniel uh, Otachi to give a few remarks. Um, Welcome, Daniel. It's emotional, but... Good evening. <coughs> Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I can probably be part of Wyndham, and at the same time, I also represent uh, some of the team that comes from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, because that's where we live. We used to live here, but we had to move. Uh, First of all, I'd like to read from the book of Isaiah 41.10. I will be very brief to the family, which says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous friend, right hand. Those are the words of the Lord. Madam, and the entire family. We can talk a lot, but at this time, sometimes some may pass, that may, you may not listen to them. But one thing I know for sure is you are a very strong believer. It's difficult right now to withstand all this, but with God's power, with God's spirit, you will overcome this. This is a difficult moment, to everybody, not only to the family. Uh, Henry, I, I just knew him since 2010, when I came down here from cities, though I was in city for a couple of months. And <clears throat> for the few days I stayed with him, I lived with him down here. I was in Jackson, I see what's over here, but we used to meet during the weekends. He's somebody I know who loved what we call peace and unity. And even the, the organization we have as Wyndham, he was one of the pioneers, or somebody who, who were after to introduce something that can bring a family together. It wasn't about only actually even the organization, but he was part of the family members that we have here in town, who can say at least some, let's have an occasion whereby we come and say hi to each other. So we are losing, or we lost somebody who was very important to us as a senior as well. Madam, you have been with the kids, or you have been with your sons and daughters back home. You have shown it before, you can do it, and still we believe you can do it. The only difference is, when you have a single stick, it's very easy to break it. When you have two sticks, it's not that easy. One stick is much easier, but two sticks, it's very difficult. So you ha when you, before you, you had two sticks, you had your husband who was helping you to overcome any challenges, anything that wanted to, to pass by your life. But now, everything, everything depends on you. As we have said before, trust the Lord, and you are a hard worker as Henry was. Henry, 
one thing that makes me feel like I've lost also a partner, there is a nickname that I call him Mogisangi, just like the, what we call it, an H mate. It's not my H mate, but somebody who can humble himself to something you call him. Why? And the family can testify. All the summers, he can bring his family to my family in Sioux Falls, just for guidance and counseling to his kids. Just he says, like, share with them, advise them how they can live. They have been to my house, they have lived, they have stayed in my house. We have been to their house, we have lived in their house, just to come and encourage their kids to have a way forward. So I can see the much respect he has to my family and the much respect we had to his family. So we have lost somebody who is very important in our life. Not only to our family, but to everybody else. Steve, you guys are very smart. Valentine, you are very smart. One thing I can tell you, America is very big. There are a lot of freedom. So let it not be that your dad was the one who made you to behave the way you're behaving, having much respect from everybody, every person who is speaking right now. But there had to be the discipline or the foundation that your parents gave you. If it was a strong foundation, just stay with it until you also get your family. So don't be swayed by anything and saying like now you have the freedom, you can't listen to your mom. Please, your dad loved education. That's the dream he had in you. All the time he says, yeah, I want them to be in school. I want them to go to good college or universities. I want them to be somebody. That dream is the only legacy that you can have for your dad just to keep on with that and be somebody as well in your family. So that when you keep on going, you can remember, this is what my dad told me. There will be no regret if you achieve what your dad wanted. And then as the entire family, and for all the friends, thank you. Let's keep on praying for Queen. Welcome, Alexina. My name is Alexina Mora. I live here in Windom with Henry. With Hen when Henry came in 2010, I can say that 10 years ago, I was the one to meet Henry. By then I was not working. I was just home with baby care, sitting with my little baby. I thought with Henry, he was a bright man. And I, I meant to stay with Henry Windom. By then I was like, I'm um, the old mother who was here from, I can say from my Paki country. Anytime when I come from work in a case of anything, if you want to take a borage, he used to pass by my house after work and sit and talk to me as a brother who is here. Before even he brought his family home here. And uh, anything which is uh, come across like about kids, like we have kids. Sometimes kids are difficult, like when they are at the stage of teenagers. We need somebody who can at least advise these kids, mostly boys, whatever. And I used to help us that side. And when we come, we came together and we talk, we are nice now. We have some few of our Kenyan people keep coming here, we don't even put a small town. We need to brand something which can bring us in common to form something like a, uh, uh, like a, an organization. So that's when we can reach some of other members coming to this site. Because we know Henry was a bright man and a, if somebody who like education and it was so very bright, we choose him as our first director when we started the organization. The first committee was the one whom we chose. He was reading us very well. And even though when we choose another one, he was the one whom we recommend to advise the other group. So, Henry slept us now accidentally. 
We were not accepted to get this. It is so hard. And we never think about here in Minnesota we were to find something hard like this. It is so hard in the entire Kenyan community too, and family too, and the relatives. Poor Enelie's family, Sarah, poor Hannah. I know Sarah, you fear God, and I know you know God, and you pray always for her. Keep praying. I know in your house, you are missing Enelie, but you have God there. And the thing which comes are hard when you are sight, you have to put your knee down and ask God, this is hard for me. And I don't have anybody whom I can ask you before you reach any of your friend to ask you. First, you need, your, need down in your house, ask God. And say so with your pastor at the church can ask you more, can help you more, other things. Nothing is going to be hard when you trust God, everything to become simple and easy. I know Steve, we like Steve, Farentine. We never see anything hard. We never see any change. What is your parents? You are a good kid. And we trust you gonna so Mark and the Queen would behave like the same. Steve, remember, now when you look at your house, your dad is not there. I can say, Mark, you can see you like a daddy and a brother. Most of the things, you have to be close, Mark, ask Mark, anything. And still, I know there's things you are talking to your dad without telling your mom. Now, be open. Anything you feel like you feel to talk to your dad since your dad is not here. You have to say, Mom, I have something hard, but I have to tell you. I have to tell you, Mom, say anything. Open. If that thing come hard, the only thing I know who can help anything to be simple is God. But don't do anything without your mom knows. If you want your mom to stay long, please don't leave your mom. Be close to your mom. Ask your mom what we do next, mom. How do you see this life? What do you think we can do? Anyway, I don't have much to say. That is was there and it is there. But we human, we never accepted that. No, it is so hard. Sorry, Sarah. Sorry, family. Uh, welcome. One of our sign of a one is waiting. Into a canoe, a young kind of one. A summer yet, I won't go to ever car. Oh, Mamba. Oh, you mean to an ring, sir? No man, no mean to Kurunka. Mwano <laughs> What did you do more? Steve, now I'm going to be a man. 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 I'm going to be Almost have a caring like in a caracal. Namana to your room, one or you in a guitar, you room or way to Munura Sama Savo. Get a Saba and me family, Nava Kenya Mansi Abama Sangira Manasara, Kumoikang and Mono, Pagiti and a Saba Sin Mansi. Munura Sama Savo, Keroya Mona to Kuruega, Nasatin and Rain Kayangi Sagaki. Now, Mariga Mangi, now Mariga, I can't even get a terminal. Boy, man, our boy, be a man. Thank you, Mama, for your um, message of condolence to the family and to the community. Josh, you can come and speak. Good evening. I, I, I'm out of words.
I don't know where to start because uh, I've lost a friend. We have lost a neighbor. We have lost a leader. We have lost a father, a cousin, an uncle, a workmate. That's why we are all in here today. And it's very unfortunate that uh, I'm standing here speaking on Henry's speaking to Henry and his family today. Henry and his family, they have been great and a blessing to us and my family in so many ways. For the Kenyan community, the Kenyans that live down here, Henry was among the people that was trying so hard to bring us together. He used to say he doesn't want us to live like lost sheep. He wanted everybody to be together as a brother, as a sister. We came up with an organization that can help us specifically in times like this. The last meeting we had not too long ago, Henry spoke a lot concerning us, concerning tomorrow, which we don't know. So for me, I've lost a honest leader. But what he has left behind, I'm proud of. Steve, Mark, Valentine, Elizabeth, very respective kids in the community. Kids that love God. Kids that love the church. Kids that love education. Which exactly what was his daddy's call on everybody. I'm going to miss Henry on Thanksgiving and on Christmas days. Every Thanksgiving, every Christmas. We get a text from Sarah, come to our house after church. If it's not on Saturday, any day, Thanksgiving and Christmas, come to our house. And many other days, we hang out with Henry, we talk. And for those who know me, whenever I meet Henry, I knew how to tickle him. I knew how to make him laugh. I knew the kind of jokes that I can make to Henry to brighten his day. So to be honest, I've lost a friend, but guess what? We have God who's giving us hope for eternity. It's been hard for everybody, but I thank you for the Wyndham community. I thank you for the people from Minneapolis, Oklahoma, Texas, you name it. Thank you for your love that you have shown to us. Thank you. Uh, Windham community. Uh, I was first as we came from Tennis Cities, Minnesota Hall, and uh, across states in the United States. Thank you for coming over here today. I think uh, I'm going to be very brief, not talk much. This man sleeping over here. This man who is lasting over here. We have known each other for the last 30 years. I happened to meet Henry when he was a very young boy. We were together in school in India. He was a young boy. He was a talented guy who can socialize with each and everyone. He was easy to make friends. And so happened, and when he came over here, we lived the same. I hosted him, we lived together. And he became like my son. Sometimes I used to call him my son, because he's a young man. My age. We have lost 
a nice man. But we know Henry's gone. Thank you for giving this opportunity to give my final condolences to, to the family of Henry, Mama Sela, Valentine, Steve, Elizabeth, and Mark. Mama Sela, we have been given a very big responsibility right now. Our responsibility is on your shoulders as a mom, as a dad a wife, a husband. We know you love God. Your children love God. There's nothing that's gonna be very hard when you are in God. Let us, almost all of us, let's firmly accept Henry's gone. Then they said to another stage how to move forward. Anything? Happens like this is to, con is to concede it has happened. How do we move forward? To us, we can talk a lot. We can talk a lot. We can talk much. But we know eventually God is the fine you know, person who can help you. Since you like to church in the church, uh, Steve, you are a very nice boy. Thank you. Because uh, we have had your lesson me where you live, right from here or to the cities, you killed friends. You are you you like your dad. That's what your dad used to do. Valentine, we know you are in school. Go to school. Stay in God's house. All true. Now, I think. Uh, I never had my, I never knew I'm going to give a speech like now. It's because I was explaining probably I might give it tomorrow. But the, in the first case, I really accept, I really congratulate those ones who come from very far, from 20 cities and everywhere. And those who have participated to this channel of our friend Henry. We wish you the best of coming over here and when you go back. And tomorrow we already, we, we're going to be together. And even when he came to Wyndham, it's actually me who brought him here to Thomas or Charlie's house. So before I read his life story, I could like to introduce the extended family, people who come from where Henry comes from. You can just stand up and wave, if you don't mind, please. Thank you, thank you so much. You can get seated. These are hard times and uh, I, I didn't imagine that I'll be here today reading his story, but I'll do it anyway. So I told you my name is uh, Timothy Ondari, and I'm going to share with you Henry's life story. His names are Henry Ngisa Nyandwaki, and he was born on July 20th, 1968, to the late Stephen Andrea Nyandwaki in Bomachoge Brabu, Kisi County, Kenya. He grew up in Kiango and attended Kiango Primary School in the year 1975 to 1981. In the year 1982 to 1985, he was in Kisi High School for his high school diploma. Before he proceeded to Gandhi High School in 1986 to 1987 for his A-levels. Between 91 and 94, Henry attended Mohanra Sukari University in India, where he earned a Bachelor's of Commerce degree. 
He later acquired an associate degree in accounting at Dakota County College here in Minnesota. He lived briefly in Kisi, for those who come from Kisi, and specifically at Magena Market, before relocating to Nairobi. Henry worked as a financial manager of Wakenya Sako for 12 years before he moved to the United States. In 1998, Henry was united in marriage to Sarah Mutio Matenge in a traditional wedding ceremony in Kenya. The couple renewed their marriage vows on February 6, 2008. Together, Henry and Sarah raised their four children, Valentine, Stephanie, Elizabeth, and Mark. In 2008, Henry moved to the United States and settled in Cannon Falls, Minnesota, for four years, where he worked as a caregiver at Angels Care Center. Henry then moved to Wyndham in 2012 and was employed by the Woods and Mountain Society as a caregiver as well. Before, he started working at Swiss Farms following department. The rest of the family, Sarah and, his, and her children, moved to the United States in 2016 and joined Henry here in Wyndham, Minnesota. Henry was a member of uh, the Kiango <coughs> Seventh-day Adventist, the SDA Church, and they spent his life exploring, experiencing, and knowing God. He later joined the Nyambunwa PhD Church where he was baptized in 2004. After moving to Wyndham, Henry and his family became members of the SDA church here in Wyndham. In Kenya, Henry was very, very active in some of the organizations, namely the Wamuchao Gebulabu Elders, and was also a vice chair of the Kiango Diaspora Development Group among others. Henry was a kind, loving husband and a father. He was devoted to his family and had many interests in life. He enjoyed reading magazines, books, newspapers, and he was also a good farmer, a good gardener, I would say. He had a, a wide knowledge, specifically in literature. And what I didn't say is, before he went to India, he was a, a teacher, English teacher back home. On September 5th of this year, 2022, Henry sustained the federal injuries in a traffic automobile accident. His faith provides hope for salvation and internal life through Christ Jesus. Henry, he survived by his loving wife. of 24 years, Saram <coughs> Mateng of Wyndham, four children, Valentine Ngisa of Lon <coughs> Lon Malinda, California, Stephen Ngisa of Minneapolis, Elizabeth Ngisa on, and Mark Ngisa of Wyndham. Henry has five siblings, 
Abisiba, Mose, Tabita, David, and Bernard Nyanduak, all from Kenya. Henry has in laws Bismarck Ondara, Eunice Nyakegita, Ezekiel Yombaso, Tolin Nyalibo, and Rose Nyanduak, as well as many relatives and friends. Henry was preceded in death by his parents, Stephanie and Rea Nyanduak, sister Eunice Onsase, brother in law James Onsase, and mother in law Susan Matenga. Blessed be the memories of Henry. Ngisa Nyanduak. And May our, <clears throat> may our Almighty God bless this soul in eternity. Thank you. Once again, I take this opportunity to thank everyone for your overwhelming support to our family. A little bit of, about Henry. He's my first cousin. And we had good times growing together back in Kenya and here in the United States. Gisa was a family man, loving husband, and a good dad. Gisa would be dearly missed. And may our almighty father last him in peace. Thank you, and thank you so much. So, I know it's a uh, a difficult time, especially for the immediate family, Sarah and Steve, Mark, Valentine and Elizabeth are back in the cities in the hospital. They'll be here tomorrow. So I would like to take this opportunity again to introduce the immediate family of Henry in Giza and you, Sarah, Steve, and Mark can maybe stand up for us, for everyone to see you. Sarah, Steve, and Mark. Thank you, thank you so much. That is Sarah, the wife of Henry Ngisa, and Mark Ngisa, the last born, and finally, Steve. Steve is the second child and is the first son of Sarah and Henry. Thank you so much for coming to share with us at this difficult time. Thank you. Refer to a story that Jesus and his disciples went through when they went, when he told them to go across the lake, Sea of Galilee. He had been working all day and he was very tired. They got in the boat and Jesus went to sleep in the stern of the boat as they were making their way across the lake. And there was a storm that came. And the disciples tried their best to save themselves from that storm, but they realized that they were not equal to it. And then they wondered, where was Jesus? And there he was, sleeping in the boat, resting in his Heavenly Father's care. And they woke him up and said, don't you care if we perish? And he, he got up. And he stood up in the boat, reached out his hands, and he said, Peace, be still. And there was calm on that Sea of Galilee that, that day, that night. And he was the one that told them to get into the boat to go to the other side of the lake. So he was the one that was going to make sure that they made it across to the other side. 
But the disciples didn't know there was a storm in between. And so right now you're, you're in a storm. And it seems almost impossible to, to make it through that storm. But remember, Jesus is in the boat, and he's the one that told us to go across to the other side. And this song is entitled uh, Beyond the Rain because it's raining right now. It's a storm right now. But the sun always comes out after the storm. And we can look forward to the time. Because of Jesus and because of all that he's done for us, we can look forward to the sun coming out at the end of the storm. When the skies are getting dark, the clouds are moving in, when the storms of life fill our hearts with pain. Just let the Savior in, for when we trust in Him, He will lead us beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying, no more crying. No more pain when we put our lives in the hands of Jesus. He will lead us beyond the We live our lives alone and try to make it on our own. Still the heartache and emptiness remain. If we hold on to God's hand, He will lead us to a land where His sun will always shine beyond the rain. Beyond the rain. There'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more pain. When we put our lives in the hands of Jesus, He will lead us beyond the battle has been won. God sent His only Son to fulfill the promise of His name. And if only we believe, what a gift we will receive to live with Jesus beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying. No more crying, no more pain. When we put our lives in the hands of Jesus, He will lead us beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying, no more crying. No more pain when we put our lives in the hands of Jesus. He will lead us beyond the rain. When we put their lives in the hands of Jesus, He will lead us beyond.
Thank you, Pastor Ken. Let's take a moment together and I'm going to read for us from 2 Corinthians. This is 2 Corinthians beginning at the end of chapter 4, verse 16, and reading through chapter 5, verse 10. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comprehension. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. I want to walk us through this passage and how it can encourage us both today and moving forward, and specifically for you, Sarah, and for you, Stephen, and for you, Mark, and for all of you as a family and as a community. Here's how these words of God encourage us today. The first is this, that we're asked to meditate on not the things that we see, but the things that we do not see. So the things that we see in a broken life in this moment is death and decay. We see Henry's body, but Henry's not here. And so we are asked to dwell not on Henry's body, which is absent of Henry right now, but rather on Henry's spirit, which is unseen and is with God. And what is it that we're told is unseen? Because what we see right now is described as an affliction. But in verse 17, this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comprehension. I think it would be more than right to say that Henry, better than any of us, understands what that eternal glory is like with Jesus. And so as we think about Henry and we remember him and we honor him, we consider this, that Henry is the one who is with Jesus and who understands what it means to dwell in glory, to dwell in light, and to dwell in perfect love with Christ. How do we move forward with that knowledge? Well, we're told that even though there is this, the truth in life that we're confronted with, which is often grief and pain, and in these days, much grief and pain, that while what we see is filled with pain, what is unseen is being made new each and every day. And we know that God is a God who sees us through each day at a time. And that's been from the beginning when he made time and days. And in the wilderness when his people wandered and he provided them just simple bread and food for what they needed each day. That I would encourage you, especially Sarah and Stephen and Mark, that God will give you what you need for today. He will. And tomorrow will come when it comes, but God has given you and equipped you with what you need for today. And he'll see you through to the end. 
and as we look toward our lives in the future, let's be of good courage, friends. Because we know that in the days to come, God has prepared us. For what? He's prepared us to be with Him. And so as we walk from day to day, in verse 6 of chapter 5, we are always of good courage, for we know that even when we have earthly bodies here in a broken world, we know that something better awaits, which is to be at home with the Lord. And if we, like Henry, are at home with the Lord, then what is broken and missing here on earth, we don't miss it anymore. We're with the Lord. We're made new. And so our conclusion is this. In verse 9, whether we are at home or away, that is whether we are here, away from God and in our bodies of brokenness, or whether we are at home and with Him, what do we do, friends? We make it our aim to please God. And so may Henry's life remind us that our aim is to be of good courage and as Henry did to live our lives to please our Savior Jesus. And each and every day, God will be faithful and He will see us through. Friends, I'd encourage you in the time that we have remaining here this evening, if you haven't already, to come and pay respects to Henry and especially to greet and express your condolences to Sarah and to Stephen and to Mark. And if you're able to be there tomorrow at the service as well, to Valentine and to Elizabeth. And please continue to pray. Now, join me and let's pray together as we move toward concluding. And Jesus, thank you that you are our Savior. We trust you. We know that you are with us. We ask that you would help us be of good courage in the face of much loss and hurt. We know that Henry is at home with you. And we ask that as we wait to come home to you, that you would help us to live to please you, to honor you and to love you, and to love our neighbors. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would especially encourage and comfort Sarah. Would you comfort Valentine and Steve and Elizabeth and Mark? We know that you are very near to them and will continue to be. Encourage us, Father, and give us what we need for today. We pray in your name. Amen.